guys, we're uh, at Supernova on Sunday here in Perth and we're talking to Kevin Hearn. Kevin, thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me. Are you having a good show? Oh, absolutely. I just got done uh, seeing some of my readers in cosplay. Oh, okay. Uh, it, it was fabulous. <laughs> uh, we, we took a whole bunch of pictures together. It was great. Right. And how was Sydney? Oh, yeah. I love Sydney. Uh, I am really going to miss the flat whites when I get back to America. They don't, they don't do them right over there. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so somebody's got to teach them how to do it right. Right. Well, it's good that you're having a good time. Um, just wanted to ask you a little bit about, um, in terms of your writing career, and um, if you could tell us a bit about when you first realized you wanted to get into writing, how, how early was that for you? It was actually when I was 19 years old. I was in um, freshman year of college, and I was reading One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest by mm -hmm. Ken Kesey. And the voice of uh, Chief Bromden changed as he got better. And I thought it was so amazing what he did with that voice there that I wanted to write um, in, in in that style in the sense that I, I like first person and how the, the character gets revealed uh, with those inner voices. Mm. And um, so that's why I primarily write in first person right. um, because I'm fascinated by uh, how a person's psychology in, is revealed through their word choice. Yeah. So uh, that that's uh, where I kind of started. I started to write then, mm. but I didn't get published in, until about 20 years later. Yeah, so. <laughs> okay. Um, and where, um how, how did you go from that point to, to urban fantasy and sci-fi? How did you kind of lock in onto that? Uh, it, it just, I, I loved the juxtaposition of the mythological, uh, mythological creatures, I'm sorry, and, and um, various religions with uh, the modern world. I mean, urban fantasy is basically a fun mashup genre. Yeah. And um, I, I think there's just endless possibilities. And I uh, started playing around uh, with uh, the Irish mythology primarily, and then I kind of added in uh, as I went. Because if I was going to say that Irish mythology was was real, yeah. uh, why aren't the others real too? <laughs> and and then uh, it kind of built from there. It was a lot of fun. Right. Okay. Um, and now you've got the ongoing series Iron Iron Druid. Mm -hmm. Now you've got several books in that series, and so you've been writing it for a while. I'd just like to ask. How do you, does it wear you down? How do you to maintain enthusiasm over multiple books over a long period of time? You just love it that much? Well, I, th I think part, part of it is that I've always had a, a cap. Uh, it's going to be nine books. This is not an indefinitely right. going series. Right. Um, so I'm not going to run out of steam because I... I'm really kind of pushing for the end. I'm looking forward to... So you've, you've got the end yeah, in Yeah, I, yeah. I already know how things are going to work out. Right. And um, I'm excited about uh, bringing it to a conclusion. But, of course, I have other things I want to write as well. You sure. Know? So, um, yeah, I, I think that... Uh, I, I do think sometimes people can have these open-ended series and maybe they run out of steam after a while. Mm. But, uh, you know, and I didn't want to do that yeah. to the fans, yeah. you know? <laughs> has, has the story evolved as you've gotten through the parts that you're writing like oh, has, yeah. the, has that ending always always been set or is it kind of evolved and changed a little bit as you get closer to it oh yeah Th things shift a little bit as you go um mm. you know i have outlines when i write books for example but that's really just to keep me on schedule yeah. it's not something that i i feel uh, obligated to follow yeah. if i get, come up with a better idea on the day that i'm writing i'm gonna sure. go with that sure yeah so and and when you take as you said creatures like um vampires and werewolves and mm. and they've been portrayed in a lot of other kind of stories over time, movies, books and things. Um, how, how do you decide what parts you want to use in your setting and what new kind of rules you want to invent and how do, how do they come, how do you make them unique for your story? Well, yeah, I, I looked story. at, you know, I, vampires and werewolves mm. have kind of a, a, a backseat role in my series. Mm. Mm. Um, but I did a couple of things just to mess with the tropes that I saw. Yeah. Like in a lot of werewolf books, for example, um, I, I saw that werewolves are portrayed for some reason as having blue collar jobs. And I thought, well, what is the reason for that? I, <laughs> I cannot think of a reason. So yeah. I just made uh, my werewolves lawyers, <laughs> just, just to kind just of to shake play it around. Yeah, just to shake it up. I, I didn't know why uh, werewolves were supposed to represent the blue collar mm. uh, worker for some reason. So You're, you're uh, right though, I, I mean, usually vampires have the, the higher uh -huh. socioeconomic and aristocratic kind of stuff, so yeah. Yeah, so I just played around uh, a little bit with, with some of the tropes there, but then uh, and then have a running joke about how do vampires uh, digest? Hmm. You know, does anything come out at the end? <laughs> you know, the, nobody ever talks about the actual. You know, what is the biology of a dead person? You know, yeah. how, how are they consuming? Where does the energy or the blood go? You know, <laughs> hemoglobin's got to back you up, right? <laughs> so You're asking the questions no one else does. Yeah, right. I just have fun with that. <laughs> 
Now, of course, you've, um, you've written in, in the Star Wars universe. You've had Heir, Heir to the Jedi come out. Uh -huh. um, how did that come about? Uh, it, it turns out that uh, the Star Wars editor, Shelley Shapiro, was a fan of my Iron Druid books. Right. And uh, she thought that Atticus O'Sullivan uh, was a little bit analogous to Luke Skywalker in the sense that uh, they get into trouble a lot yeah. and are kind of impulsive. Yeah. And, and so she gave me a, a call, uh, I guess figured of, she shot me an email mm. and asked, uh, would you be interested in writing Luke Skywalker? And my goodness, yes, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Why would you say no? Right. Um, and did they, did they take you through what was happening at the time in terms of the Star Wars Expanded Universe being kind of reset to oh, some that degree and that you'd be one of the first entries into the new canon, the new Star Wars Expanded Universe? They did not. They uh, that was you? a surprise. Right. I remember being at uh, C2E2 in Chicago yep. on, on the day, the day that they announced that so the Expanded Universe the, is gone yeah, and it's Legends. The, the Legends banner. And so like, yes, we've just gotten rid of everything, but look, here's Kevin Hearn's Heir to the Jedi cover. <laughs> so that was, that, was, that was what happened uh, to right. me on that day. They revealed my cover, and, I, and that was the first time I saw it. Right. And they revealed that I would be canon and that all of these other things weren't. And so that was an interesting day. Yeah, yeah. so you were, you were writing without that knowledge pretty much? Or? Yes, um, when, when they first signed me up for it, um, Lucasfilm had not yet been sold to Disney. Yeah. And so that occurred after I'd already signed my contract. Okay. And so things you know, were changing and so on behind the scenes, but none of that got shared with me. Um, you know, honestly, my story is set between Star Wars and Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. Those movies are not going to be changed yeah, that's, anymore. That's right. And and so they, uh, you know, <laughs> I, I, never I, say never. Right, right. Uh, I, I, so I couldn't really, uh, you know, since those were not going to change, I didn't have to worry too much about my story changing. Mm. Um, and and I just, uh, it was kind of business as usual for me. Um, just the timing worked out so that I wound up being canon. Yeah, and uh, yeah. just a tiny couple just of little quirks uh, that they that they messed with uh, in, in, on the details, but nothing major yeah. happened. Okay. Now, with a with a character like Luke, mm -hmm. who who has special abilities and he's he's on a journey, becomes a very powerful guy. Uh, as a writer, do you find, and not specifically to Luke, but any kind of character that just grows and grows in power, how is that challenging in terms of coming up with? Um, adversity for a character like that who, I mean, it could be a wizard or anyone on the hero's journey, they, they hit a point where yeah. you'd almost expect they can walk in and fix whatever the problem is. It is, it's, yeah. The, the, uh, the problem of, uh, you know, escalating power and so mm. on and how do you escalate the conflict. Um, you know, the, the idea that if you start out with saving the world, where do you go from there? Yeah. Um, you know, this is the problem a lot of times with uh, some of the superhero movies, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, well, we've just saved the world, now what are we going to do? Yeah. Or the Jack Bauer 24 thing. Yeah. I've saved the world from a nuclear bomb already, now what, now what do I do? What's next? Yeah, yeah. and uh, that, that can be a, a difficulty. And um, one of the reasons I want to only do nine books, you know, um, we're getting to... Um, you know, we're, we're building up to a crescendo there, and, and after that, you know, it's, it's pointless to keep going. Yeah, so. right. Okay. Now, um, having, having played in, in a setting like Star Wars, would mm -hmm. you like to go back to Star Wars, or are there other, other franchises you'd like to play in the sandbox of characters and toys? I really enjoy my own work uh, yeah. a little bit more. Okay. Um, I, I have an epic fantasy that I'm going to be doing uh, very soon. I've already begun it, honestly. And uh, that'll be the next thing that comes out after uh, book eight of Iron Druid. And uh, then I have to finish up the Iron Druid Chronicles mm. and, uh, you know, and continue that trilogy. So, yeah, I've, I have five books still coming yeah, out so and uh, under contract. So, uh, plate's yeah, full. <laughs> yeah my, my plate is, at, is very full. I don't have time. Great. <laughs> All right. Well, I hope you have a really good show here in Perth. Sounds like Sydney was good. Uh, thanks very much for talking with us. Oh, thank you so much. Thank it's you. wonderful. Yeah.